Everything in this reality was created by someone's mind. The car you're sitting in, your home, your technology. Matter is simply the materialization of thoughts. When you're creating, you're acting within your nature. And when you're not creating, you're in a state of deep rest. And we call this being depressed. The life you're in right now is a result of all of the past thoughts that you have entertained up until this very moment. You chose the life you were born into, the parents you chose to incarnate from, and the life circumstances that your consciousness would experience. Even if they were unfavorable, there was a past life version of you, whether consciously or unconsciously, that has brought you to this exact moment in time, all because of your thoughts and your mind. So in order to fully reclaim all of your power in this lifetime, we must recognize the law of mentalism. Among the seven hermetic principles, this is the first universal law. And this information is found in the book, The Kabbalion. It talks all about how the all is mind and the universe is mental. When you grasp the truth of the mental nature of the universe, you begin your path to mastery. Understand the mind and you are equipped with the master key. Without the master key, mastery is impossible and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. This is why the law of mentalism is the first of the seven hermetic laws. It sets up every other law of the universe. So the nature of our mind, aka our thoughts, now become the most important focus in our realities. But whose thoughts? What are thoughts? Where are you receiving your thoughts from? I'd like to think of thoughts as a sense, just like smells or sounds, physical sensations, sights, tastes, a thought is a sense. We can pick thoughts up from the people around us through their energetic fields, which is why it's so important to surround yourself with positive people who are committed to growth. Otherwise, you will literally become them via thought transfer. You'll start thinking the thoughts that they're thinking and wonder, oh, where did I pick that up from? The people around you. And I also like to think of thoughts as senses, especially when it comes to thoughts that linger in environments. Every environment is coded with specific experiences from the past. That's why when you're born, you're called to visit certain places. Your soul longs to go travel to these areas. And it's because these places hold memories of past lives that you can access from simply being around that energy. Thoughts are also self-created inner monologues based on our experiences. So we can ruminate and overthink and get lost in the maze of our own mind. Thoughts are also entities and can become real by simply putting power to a thought form. Meaning if you think about the devil long enough, you can actually create a thought form around you that represents the energy of the very thing you're afraid of. This is how powerful we are. We're so powerful that if we believe that we're not powerful, we get what we believe in. Our thoughts create everything. And to take it one step deeper, Nikola Tesla, who is one of the greatest inventors of all time, has said, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. In the spiritual community, we would know this core as the Akashic Records, a divine database of eternal information stored in a cloud, a cosmic cloud the universe's iCloud, if you will. We can always tap into this information and access any place in any time at any moment because we live in a quantum universe of no time. Time is non-linear and happening all at once. This is actually how you heal past traumas, especially from your inner child's experience. You visit memories and you go send love to those memories. And you'll remember that when you were a child, you would feel this presence of protection around you. That is usually our current versions of ourselves sending love quantumly to all the versions of ourselves. So now that we understand what thoughts are, how can we set our thoughts up to create our ultimate success? Using the law of mentalism, we have to realize that this entire reality is a mirror reflection of who we're being internally. So the mirror externally will only smile at you when you smile internally at it. How you feel about yourself is what you will attract in your reality. If you feel like the luckiest person alive, you'll notice that you're always in the right place at the right time. You're being gifted things. You attract people who can help you elevate. And on the other hand, if you feel negatively about yourself, you might notice other people feel the same way about you. You encounter roadblocks and injustices and overall annoyances in your day. And this is because thoughts are transferred via our auras. So if you are feeling all this negativity about yourself, it is just like screaming at other people, I hate myself. They sense that we are energetic beings. So focus on developing positive thoughts and you will become a positive vibration. 
So the thoughts we think about ourselves, or in other words, our self-concept, must be thoughts that can propel us into timelines we most desire. Even if we're currently not experiencing a life that we like in the 3D, we have to pull our focus away from the external and put it all internally. Change happens by focusing mental energy on the imagination, not on the matter. Matter doesn't matter. So our self-concept refers to the beliefs, thoughts, and perceptions that we hold about ourselves. It plays a crucial role in shaping our behavior, emotions, and overall well-being, and the ability to manifest our desires into this physical realm. Have you ever tried to set a goal and then fall short in taking actions on that goal? Your conscious mind has made the decision, but the subconscious thoughts and beliefs are running 95% of the show. This is why reprogramming the subconscious mind for new levels of success is so important. And you can tell whether or not you're in alignment if you want one thing and your behaviors are showing the complete opposite. This is a telltale sign of misalignment. Alignment would be you think one thing, you execute on it, there are no blocks, period. So we're always going to be unveiling new levels of who we are through self-exploration and through shadow work and trauma healing. And because your identity will be constantly evolving as you expand and as your desires are achieved, you will need to mourn and thank past identities that no longer serve you, which is what we call the dark night of the soul, forgetting who we are and going through the four stages of alchemical purification. An episode I created that you can learn more about entitled Alchemy, Transforming Anything into Love. Some people limit their expansion and growth so that they can continue being a version of themselves for other people. This looks like being the perfect son or the perfect girlfriend, sister, brother, whatever it is. People will limit themselves and their identities to make their loved ones and friends feel safe and comfortable. Because when a person drastically shifts, it makes everyone question their own identities and their own mental constructs. What are they creating and contributing to the world? Your evolution will challenge a person's choice to stay stagnant. Your growth will both trigger and activate people, but we always must be committed to growth. Otherwise, if our imagination becomes weak, our life force of creation becomes suppressed. And this is how we get caught in the mind matrix of the world. We forget that we came here as divine creators. And then we get lost in the illusion of matter, believing that we are victims of our realities, forced to contribute to a fixed, flawed system. When that isn't the case, there are people doing meditative practices to heal the collective every single day. There's something called mental transmutation, which means the art of changing and transforming mental states, forms, and conditions into others. Some of the advanced mental alchemists have been able to assert a certain degree of power to control the physical elements of nature. Things like earthquakes, rain, sunlight, the physical phenomena, weather control is a very real thing. And there are also people who can astral project their consciousness into different realms, spaces, timelines to extract information because the universe is mental. Can you imagine how much power we would all have as a collective if we all started pouring our attention and focus on what we desired for this reality? Our dream world would become a physical manifestation. The power that would be generated to those thought forms would create entire realities. This is why it becomes so dangerous when all of our collective mental power is focused on separation consciousness, like politics or religion. These topics divide more than they unite. We can also look towards our dream world for information on how the mind works. We know that we must physically rest every single night and that our consciousness goes somewhere to recalibrate. So in this reality, to become a potent creator, we need to be reprogramming the way we think, feel, speak, and act to create alignment within our beings so that we can be channels of higher information and so that we can reclaim our natural power and manifestation abilities. There's also lots of mental work that you can practice when you're having conversations with people. You can actually start sending them white light in conversation if you wanna bless them and bless the energy. Not only that, but you can put up energetic blocks to certain people so that they steer clear from you and don't even know why. This is called creating a repelling aura. There's also a chart called the Map of Consciousness by David Hawkins. And on this, you will see a scale of emotions ranging from guilt and shame at the bottom to love, enlightenment, and abundance at the top. And when we're in these lower states of emotions, we're highly dysregulated. Maybe we're filled with past traumas and thoughts of unworthiness. In reality, what needs to be transmuted before the emotion and the vibration is raised is our mental perception, how we view ourselves 
how we view the world around us, other people, our safety, our past, present, future, all of these mental conceptions and self-conceptions need to be shifted. The narrative that you're telling yourself about yourself needs to be that of grace, healing, kindness, and love. That's when your emotions will rise and you'll start to feel like you can be a creator again. Because when you're vibrating at a very low state, you're most likely in survival mode. And when we're surviving, there's not much room for creation or imagination. So we become passengers to life's already established mental creations versus magical creators of our own realities that we're projecting into the field of infinite possibilities. So when you master your mind, you master your thoughts, you shift your behaviors, and then you access the heart space and you unlock the master key of creation. So I hope this helps you understand more about the law of mentalism and inspire you to take radical accountability for where you're currently at in life to create your own beautiful, magical reality that the collective gets to enjoy as well. I'll see you in the next one.